So welcome back guys to another SCPH replay cast and this one this time gonna be on one of these uh, new maps back in my day we didn't have the slow fields up in the air we had an island we had free space and it was called junk pit or something like that it was my favorite map I knew it was pretty pretty badly designed all the way back in Wings of Liberty but here we go into our match it's zvp between our two players interesting first here on the north side of the map it's not top left this time it's not bottom right it's not one of those diagonals it's some interesting spots here and now it's gonna be soul goodman very cool soul he's gonna need to bail you out and look at this map absolutely beautiful as we round on over to the eastern quadrant instead opponents on that blue protoss lucid i'm feeling lucid tonight i love the pylon here as well i love the icon and let's just talk about purity and industry real quick look at the stars look how they shine for you alongside these inhibitor zones and basically this slows things down to a crawl you do have fast units they're gonna be basically normal speed and the thing about these inhib zones is they truly allow you to get some free hits onto some of those retreating units. So you'd expect your timings for your air attacks to be better on this map like this. But hey, you're going to take more damage if you feel like you have to disengage. But I've seen a few matches here and now and air still is a good way to go about things. As an expansion is coming online, it seems like Solid Goodman though, going for that pool first actually. Playing the aggression earlier on, Lucid in the meantime, going for a wall on in onto the natural already. And damn, this map is actually beautiful. Interesting island here onto the top right. It's just a normal base. It isn't anything special. No rich Vespin, no rich minerals. And by this point in time, it's all good, man. And I'm keeping an eye out onto this wall. Does Lucid know that this is coming? Seems like he's gonna go for the gateway here and now. And with the pro being pushed on back. So Goodman gonna find the opening. Apparently, there's still a spot here in the wall that isn't covered. And this is terrible here for Lucid. He has to go for the pylon from the outside instead. And desperation mode here and now for our blue protoss already. Can Soul Goodman end things on a high note at an early parts of this matchup? The problem right now is this pylon will go down, but will it actually make it? Can the Chrono Boost be enough? No, the sentry cannot come on that. And the probes are pulled. The Zergling attack. Very, very effective. Seems like Lucid forced to go on over to the natural instead. And in the meantime, Pylon coming on over yet again. Warp Gate Reachers getting delayed. This is so perfect here for Soul Goodman right now. Creoni, man. If I haven't mentioned it before, this is Creoni's other account in the EU region. By this point in time, this is an unranked game as we said before. If we did so... The sentry gonna be in behind. Now, of course, the sentry very effective to force those Zerglings back. The beam gonna be enough to get a little bit of consistent damage. As well as the force field set on over to push them back from any building under peril. In the meantime, with that opening, Soul Goodman gonna have free reign to go for three bases. Now, usually when you are gonna be playing that pool first, you wanna go for that aggression. Soul Goodman did that just well timed. And now this gives him the opportunity to play the macro game instead. When you play the macro, you expect hatchery first. But hey, if you go over the pool first, you get earlier queens. You get to apply pressure against your opponents. And you can do whatever you want with the map, knowing that your opponent is going to be afraid behind that wall. But still, Lucid keeping up with the tech. Going over to Twilight Council. In the meantime, Robo Facility on the main base. And the real question here is, what is going to be Lucid's plan? Will he go for Sky Toss? Or will he really just go for warp prisms all over the map to try and just bridge the gap between these two bases? On this instance though, like, I just wanna really check out how this map goes. It's so nice. It's such a really nice looking map. I like the cheekiness here of the inhibitor zone. We'll see if it's gonna be a bigger deal later on in many of these matchups. And this is very cheeky. We also have the Brave C vents. So, if you, you can set up ambushes, there's always action there. And it really goes to show, I guess this is why this map won in the TLM 
Team Liquid Map Making Contest. Really worth the checkout, especially onto the ladder. I'd love to see replays on the other two maps that are new for this season as well. But in the meantime, we are going to get that Glaive upgrade here and now for the Adept. Make them a lot more potent in many, many of these fights. Good thing that the Adept nerf, the Adept change got reverted back to something that people were very, very comfortable with. I felt like the old Shade upgrade, uh, the Shade attack speed upgrade, like after coming out of the Shade, you get the you get the extra buff. I, I don't think that was really worth it. It was uh, it neutered Adepts to a pretty interesting degree but now mass adept is looking looking a little more you know a little more stable a little more okay okay as a composition but anyway we are going to be seeing some banelings now into the fold lair tech already online nihilus network as well here and now for soul goodman and the good thing here for our red zerg he has vision of that main base can just plop it on over and destroy them from behind enemy lines a lot of upgrades being built here and now by Soul Goodman. He's gonna go for Carapace as well. Enables these overlords to go a little faster to make sure that he can get the proper spot of vision for that Night as well. Very smart play here from Soul right now. He is gonna go for that Roach Warren as well to add a little bit more bulk in his composition. And it seems like we are gonna be staying on a lower tier tech here for our Zerg. Not gonna be overcommitting, not gonna be going on over to bigger and better units. Instead, make the better smaller units better into many many of these fights by increasing that movement speed increasing the movement speed and the hp and just increasing more movement speed on that overlord you can think about it the zerg has a lot of movement speed upgrades so, as here we go yet again we drop those drones from lucid they'll be able to get a few pickoffs on to some of those workers six drones actually going down there in the meantime nidus network already ready to go the real question is what is lucid gonna be doing he knows the nidus is online he has to be wary, make sure that these overlords cannot get as close as possible. Force his opponent to have a bad Nidus network drop. Anyway, Soul Goodman still having lots of vision around the map. Overlords littering basically where Lucid wants to go. In the meantime, Lucid playing it safe. Gonna be on to the bottom right expansion. In the meantime, Soul Goodman playing really key to his own ideology and to his own playstyle. An aggressive expansion here for the third. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually goes on forward with a fort nearby. Now he can go for the one across the room, across the street. Be a good, be a good way to parallel his movement. But he really wants to feel cheeky. One expansion here, not gonna hurt too much. Fortunately, of course, it is on low ground, so it is a lot of risk. And Soul Goodman taking risks, sure, but not the stupid ones. Better call Saul, as this might be some insurance needed by either side. Bailings, of course, gonna be Kamikaze's onto that book, and here comes trouble! Seems like Lucid though, scaring Saul to put off. Doesn't wanna go for the engagement there. In the meantime, Queen's gonna be disengaging. And is there gonna be drops anywhere around the map? Seems like it's not the case. Double evil chambers, and we are gonna have Butyls as well here for Soul Goodman. Providing some cover, Bailings though on the north hand side, destroying all the adepts there. In the meantime, Roach is brawling against these Immortals and Stalkers. Gonna be trying to add some damage as well. Still though, Lucid gonna be able to win that one out. Soul Goodman doesn't really care too much. If you're looking to recruit, we're looking to recoup his forces. Those Roaches, pretty cost effective for the damage they were doing in the first place. But Lucid right now pushing lines, pushing onto that third base. Look to make sure that he can get some pickoffs onto these drones and hamper the economy of the Zerg in the first place. Tran now coming, Stalker is gonna go down though to these drones as well as that Zergling. And Lucid forgetting about these units, this is looking really good here for our Protoss player. And the Mutal is gonna be flying on over to clean things up. Sure, drones go down and that is gonna hit up Soul Goodman's economy. But hey, if you get the kills with the drones, why? Why would you leave them behind like that? Highly unfortunate, therefore, Lucid could have used those into a later fight. But I digress, he has made space for himself. He takes the lead in that worker count. And so Goodman will be trying to build on up instead. Now in the meantime, that's a lot of cannons actually being set on up here by Lucid. And it reminds me of like a, a campaign map for some reason because of how this is all looking. So though, I really like how this map looks. And it seems like the action has been pretty interesting so far. European industry. 
cleanliness and workload. You know, be able to stay safe, guys, while doing whatever work you are doing at home. But here comes the roly poly oldies moving on over to the other side. A lot of bandings actually being built here by Soul Goodman. That's gonna be around 20 of them rolling on and to go for the bust. The real question is what will come after? As soon as the wall comes down, what is the next step here for our Zerg player? Mutilus, of course, gonna be so so pesky into those skylines. In the meantime, Lucid feeling as the advantage can go for the aggressive push, but immediately gonna get punished for it because here comes the Bailings, here comes the Mutilus as well. Good cancels there though from Lucid, saving some minerals. And turning those resources into a warp cycle instead. Now a lot of Bailey's going on to those stalkers. Holy crap! All of them blowing on up. And so Goodman destroying those units. Not on the best way. But hey, damage being done on both sides. Lucid gonna be able to mop the floor out of all this good micro as well. And so Goodman will be dropping on over with that composition. Bailings turned into mush. And the Stalkers are able to tag that out pretty well for quite a while. Would be of course a little better if that's an Immortal somewhere into the field. But hey, Lucid will take what he can get. And he is going to go to get another attack on. Going through the fence. So good man, going to be able to spot things out. In the meantime, here comes the small force that the Zerg has in the first place. It's a strike team of some sorts. And this one Stalker is spot of trouble. Going to be blinking on backwards with the rest of the crew. And then we got Lucid pushing on in yet again. Sees the Queen. Zergling still brought into the fold. And here comes the attack. Can the Bailings actually get some good hits this time? There we go. Damage being done. But still so good man on the back foot. These roaches need to stay alive. Lucid sending more and more of these units. And the Protoss. The aggression really working out here for our player. Anyway. You know, it's going to be keeping up with the reinforcements. And eventually, the strike team here for Lucid is going to go down. He hasn't really fully committed on at that as of yet. Sure, he's sending reinforcements, but it isn't as full-hearted as you would expect. He's a little half-hearted. He feels like he's just trying to provide pressure. And at the same time, force Soul Goodman to build army instead of workers. Lucid playing the long con, and in behind, he went for the drop. A lot of attempts, actually. Onto that main base, going for a last stand by this point. Good uh, damage being done already. Roach is still tanking things over. But the Zerglings running into the fold, and so good, men. I mean, worse for wear, it's just so much pressure being applied on both fronts. And you can see the Zerg react already. Fourth base, all the way here on the top left. Fifth base, across the street. It seems like so Goodman has been beaten back, but he isn't beaten, not by a long shot. Lucid right now. If you look to set things over, looking to move on and increase the pressure. He is going to go for a Phoenix from this one Stargate. Going to be pretty effective, of course, to snipe down these overlords along the map. But at the same time, could have done it a little earlier. It really seems like Lucid was forced out to play onto early aggression after the aggression there from Soul Goodman to begin with. But one thing Soul Goodman is doing right is really this creep spread. He's creeping on closer and closer to his opponents. That creep. Gonna be providing a lot of movement speed there for those units to begin with. And here comes the Zoss, as well as the Adepts and the Immortals. It's gonna be time for the army to congregate yet again and march on forward. Truly the proper skin here to play just those robotic units here on Purity on Industry. And Robo Bay gonna be another addition to the Arsenal Templar Archives as well into the field. Plus two right here, right now. Going online for Lucid, but at the same time, Soul Goodman is already on plus two on both sides of the ground. And at the same time, trying to get a little more onto those flyers. Plus three right now on range coming online. Gonna be trying to research that one up as quick as can be. But you know what else is gonna be quick? Soul Goodman. Up the floor against the opposition. Here comes Lucid right now. To find a few more pickoffs. It seems like our game has stabilized to a small degree. Both sides playing wary of one another. But with Lucid, he is feeling confident that he can actually win at this turtle game. He already has the position. He already has basically as many bases against his opponent to a good degree after a few of those hits. But in behind, it seems like Lucid unable to get as much army as he wants to begin with. Anyway though, it's all about these creep streamers right now. And in the meantime, it's Soul Goodman with Mutilus, with Banelinks. Same composition yet again. 
It will work this time because Archon is going to be very, very effective, of course, if those Mutalists do bunch up and do get taken down. In the meantime, here comes the push. Looking for the shove. So good, man. Spotting things out with the Overlord. And it seems like Lucid is going to go for the march on in. Trying to make it through, trying to find his way. Seems like Creep, though, his first priority to make sure that there isn't going to be any antics on his base. And I like how Lucid is playing the safe. He's making sure that everything is going to be fine and dandy for his upcoming defense as soon as he goes on the offensive. Soul Goodman, though, all maxed out. If we look to make it to the 200 200, the Protoss will be trying to do the same. And sure, you'd say the Protoss will have the advantage on the 200 200 mark, but if Soul Goodman has the proper micro and has the proper abilities at the proper times, well, he can actually turn things around. A drill gland is gonna be into the fold here and now, making Zerg even stronger. And that has been the methodology of our Zerg player so far. He's trying to be as methodical as possible as here comes the surround already. Good micro here and now from Soul Goodman Lucid. Gonna be disengaging with the blink on out, but it's way too late. Damage being done already. Lucid losing the bulk of this army. There we go with the recall. One immortal goes down, second one falls, and the lone survivor gonna be the one to tell the tale as these stars try to get on out. I like how Soul Goodman went on the offensive there. He went for the surround first. Perfect, perfect micro in that instance. And as the Stalker falls, it's time for the Doomsday Clock to move on forward. Lucid desperate right now to get a few more units back into the fold. Colossus is actually going to be the next queue up here for our Blue Protoss. And in behind, seems like Lucid is going to be going for some Banes instead. The Banelings, of course. Gonna be packing a bunch in a few of these instances, especially in big numbers. In the meantime, Zerg is moving on forward. Star's gonna get built yet again. Overseers actually tanking damage alongside these Corruptors. Blink him forward! And there is the punish! Way too aggressive there from Lucid. He is gonna lose everything he brought into the fold. And Soul Goodman push full. Winning it out in this tug of war. Then moving on over to the sport base instead Colossus in behind but the swarm of Mutalis up in the sky doing the damage that needs to be done more stalkers being brought on in but by this point in time you're gonna need AOE instead Phoenix trying to go for the micro it's a beautiful fight into the air micro on point here and now for both sides as Soul Goodman giving chase Lucid trying to get on away and GG is called Soul Goodman takes the victory and it could have gone either way, but the Crucible truly came as soon as the round came, and as soon as those Blink Stalkers pushed forward instead of back. What a game there, what a show, and what a comeback basically from getting pressured. It looked like Soul Goodman had the advantage at the early part, but Lucid was able to turn things around for a good chunk of the mid game. Later on though, Soul Goodman didn't even build the higher tier units. He just kept on upgrading, made sure that he can play his composition well. Went for the surround, went for the bus, destroying pretty much everything. And with the Stalkers out of position, they did get surrounded by the Banelings compared to the other fight earlier on where it was just the front of the Stalkers taking damage. That was pretty much cost effective there. That was the game there. As soon as the Colossus and the Phoenix says we're all being pressured, Solid effort so far there for Soul Goodman. And hey, that's going to be one lawyer that I can rely on.